Hello, and today I'm going to talk a little bit about compatible numbers. I know it is a little confusing for some, so hopefully this video will help to clear some of that confusion. One of the most important things for you to know about compatible numbers is that they are considered to be friendly numbers. They are friendly numbers. And what are friendly numbers? Numbers that usually end in zero or five. They end in zero or five. So I have a hundreds chart right here. And if you look carefully, you'll see that I highlighted my columns of fives and my col columns of tens. So if trying to figure out which numbers are friendly numbers, then this is the best way to look at it. Your compatible or friendly numbers are any of these numbers that have been highlighted. Compatible numbers is slightly different from rounding because of the fact that it may end in a five. When rounding, however, rounding numbers always end with a zero. They always end with a zero. But with compatible and rounded numbers, both of those numbers really help us to do mental math. And being able to do mental math is an amazing thing because it makes it so much easier for us to work with our numbers. So I'm going to do a problem, a couple actually, and you'll see how I can figure out which one of my numbers is the most compatible to use. So. Here's one example, 27 plus 38. 27 plus 38. So the first thing I will do is I'm going to look at my hundreds chart and I'm going to find the number 28. Here's a number 28. It is in the same row as 25 and 30. Now, if we look at 28, is 28 closer to 25 or is it closer to 30? Well, it is closer to 30 because it only takes two jumps to get to 30 while it takes three jumps to get to 25. So the most compatible of these two numbers in this row would be 30. So we would use 30 as our compatible number. And I just realized I chose 28 while my number is 27 so for now i'm going to actually change it to 28 just so it makes more sense so 28 and my second number is 38 so once again i'm going to find 38 and 38 can be found in row and where is it closer to is it closer to the number 40 or to the number 35 in this case, it is much closer to the number 40. So 40 is the most compatible number out of these two, or the more compatible, rather. It is the more compatible of, so we would use 40. Now, what is the answer? 0 plus 0 is 0, and 4 plus 3 is 7. Our answer would be 70. Now. This is what makes it so easy to work with because these numbers ended in zeros. This is why working with compatible numbers, also known as friendly numbers, makes it easy for us to do mental math because I didn't have to draw and count and use a bunch of tools or manipulatives to solve my answer. Now, let's work this problem out on its own. 8 plus 8 is 16. I carry my six ones, and then I carry my one ten here. Three plus two is five, and five plus one is six. When I solved it with the exact numbers, my answer is 66. But when I use my compatible numbers, my answer is 70. What does this tell us? That our exact number needs to be very close to our compatible. Our exact needs to be close to our compatible. So you can see why it makes sense for us to use compatible numbers. Because 66 
is about the same thing as saying 70. We have rounded up. But in this case, as I've said, we're not rounding. We're just using compatible numbers. Let's try another example. I'm going to add 75 plus 86. Let's go back here and find 75. Hmm, 75 is actually highlighted. 75 is already a compatible number. Now let's try to find 86. 86, 86 is in this row. Now is 86 closer to 85 or is it closer to 90? 86 is closer to 85. So 85 would be the more compatible of the two numbers. So we will use 85. So in this problem, 75 plus 85 would be one of the best ways to solve this problem and find the sum. Notice both numbers end with a 5, and this is what makes these two numbers so friendly. 5 plus 5 is 10. Carry 1. 7 plus 1 is 8. 8 plus 8, 16. This is a doubles fact. The answer is 160. We could go ahead and solve this to see if our compatible answer is close to the exact answer here. 5 plus 6 is 11, and I carry my 1. 7 plus 1 is 8. 8 plus 8, 16. And we have 161. So look at that. This is for the exact, and this is for compatible. Or using compatible numbers. It is very important as you work with your numbers that you realize that compatible numbers always end with a 5 or a 0. And to end this particular video, we'll do one with three digit numbers. We will do 143 plus. 761. Now we have a three-digit number here. This may be a little tricky, but don't let it be tricky to you. What we would do is we would just pay attention to the last two digits here. The last two digits. So let's look at 43. We will try to find 43 here. Where is 43? 43 is right here. Is 43 closer to 45, 50, or 40? Let's look. Well, if for 45, it takes two jumps. For 50, it takes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven jumps. For 40, it would take one, two, three jumps. So honestly, the best response or the most compatible to 40, 45, and 50 would be 45. So we would use 145 as the most compatible number for 143. Now 761, we would look for 61 on our hundreds chart. Now is 61 closer to 65? Is it closer to 70? Or is it close to 60? Let's look. Well, one, two, three, four. It would take four jumps to get to 65. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine jumps to get to 70. How many jumps would it take to get to 60? One. Because right before 61 is the number 60. So our best or most compatible number would be 700. 60. 5 plus 0 is 5. 6 plus 4, that's 10. I carry my 1. 7 plus 1 is 8. 8 plus 1 is 9. That would be our answer. Now let's to solve it with the exact numbers. 3 plus 1, that's 4. 6 plus 4, 
that's 10. 7 plus 1, 8, and 8 plus 1, 9. And look at that. Do you see? Both numbers are very close to each other. This is using the exact, and this is with using compatible numbers. If it's one thing you should leave this video with, you should remember that compatible numbers end with a zero or five. And that makes them friendly. That's all for today's lesson. Hope you can join me another time. Toodles!